Okay, I'm back at it again with another Harvard problem. Uh, I think I could actually solve this one, so let's just hope for the best. It says a beach ball is thrown upward with initial velocity v naught. Assume that the drag force from the air is f equals m times alpha times v. What is the speed of the ball v final when it hits the ground? An implicit equation is sufficient. Does the ball spend more time or less time in the air than it would if it were in a vacuum? You just have to draw the free body diagram. So if we threw an object in the air and it had an initial velocity, um, so what we're going to have is basically the weight of the object, so mg, and then um, the drag force is also pulling down on the object, which is going to be f. And that's pretty much it. Those are the only two forces that are acting on the uh, object, dt. You can also write this with respect to position, but since we don't need that, but you can also write ma as, uh, I think it's mv dv dx. If you solve this, this gives you like the work energy principle. So um, that's another way you could write acceleration, but I think we want it in time because it says we're looking for the time for for this problem. So we just have to solve this integral. And then that's it. It's a separable differential equation, I believe. I guess let's draw a little picture. So this is going to be the ground, and this is going to be the ball with its initial velocity, v naught, and it's going to travel all the way up. It's going to reach a height and then it's going to come back down with the final velocity v final. So we're looking for v final. That's the first part of the question. We're not given much and we integrate this from v naught to v final. So that'll be our integral which is a uh, negative t. Um, I think that's right. I think this will become some sort of a uh, natural logarithm which will get rid of that uh, negative because the, uh, more than likely the, the natural logarithm that will be coming out from this integral, I believe, would be uh, s the argument would be less than one, making the whole thing negative. So therefore, it cancels that negative. So that's what I think will happen. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what will happen because it's the only way time could be compensated if it was negative. So now the tricky part is solving this integral. Maybe you can't do that because what I'm thinking is what we could do is a partial fraction decomposition. Well, is that even necessary? We could just do u substitution. It's not even that difficult. Well, this one's actually pretty easy then. Uh, I believe if this was a uh, the drag coefficient or the drag force was actually proportional to v squared, uh, you would have to do partial fraction decomposition because you would just basically convert this to a difference of two squares, factor those out, and they do perform perform partial fraction decomposition. This is actually pretty straightforward. I'm gonna leave this as an indefinite integral because I don't I don't want to convert this uh, v final and v naught into these domains or the u domain. And then we evaluate this whole thing from uh, v naught to v final. And then this is a difference, so you could combine those. And there you go, that's actually the equation for the velocity. And it says, does this ball spend more or less time in the air than it would if it were in a vacuum? Okay, so that's pretty much the same problem again without uh, basically the drag coefficient. I feel like this is a little too simple. This equation right here is true when the, the drag force Oh wait, no, the drag force always opposes motion. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say the drag force helps the helps the object when it falls down, and that's completely wrong. So never mind. This is this is the velocity equation. I was gonna say like, oh, when it comes back down, the drag force actually helps the ball move faster, and that's that's completely wrong. It has to have a limit. There's always a what do you call it? It's called terminal velocity. If you let the if you let time reach infinity, it'll reach its uh, terminal velocity. So. Okay, I mean, intuitive, intuitively speaking, I feel like with drag it would take longer. So let's tr let's try to graph this. I feel like that'll be the most easy way to do this. Like the equation looks like that. Like sometimes, like if you cross this point, it'll take the same amount of time. So like, is there like a? It's not like an ultimatum. Like there is specific velocities that make it longer or shorter. I feel like the slope of this line 1 over g is way faster than ln, so therefore it would cross the line at some point. But it should equal, because like what I'm thinking is like if you have a graph, you have a linear function that looks like that, and then you have uh, some logarithmic term, it should cross at some point, right? It does change, right? God damn it. No, the, the force vector does change, because when it comes down to gravity vector or the weight vector is pointing downward at all moments but the force vector is now opposing it yeah i think i did this wrong 
Okay, welcome back, everybody. We're ready. Oh, I'm joking. Like, this is... I, I'm basically just restarting the problem anyway, because I realized I messed up in the beginning. Okay, um... There's that. Okay, T1 is that. So, I guess the final equation, we can see the total time for basically with the drag force. So, not much change besides this negative sign, and, uh... This is a tough question. I, I thought it was a B. I mean, I could solve it. I mean, I have the answers in front of me. I just need to figure out which one's faster or slower. So that's the maximum height. It's easier just like code this and figure it out. And I feel like I'm, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. I don't know how else you would do this besides just looking at a graph. Oh, look at this one. I was trying to predict my grade when I was in school. That's pretty good. What, what was my grade that I was trying to predict? And 82%. This is what I was predicting. Interesting. Okay, I'm getting an issue. I coded this to see the graph, and apparently this is a constant. No matter, um, no matter what velocity or initial velocity you give, it will always result in the same amount of time. So that physically doesn't make sense. Like if you throw a ball 100 meters in the air versus throwing a ball one meter in the air, it will take the same amount of time for those two balls to reach the ground you hit those balls simultaneously in the air at the same time. Even if I get the equations right, I'm not going to say I got this problem right because I didn't really answer the question. Intuitively speaking, I would say the one with drag would take longer. I don't know if it'll take longer all the time. I mean, it should. I feel like it should at all, all the time, but I could be wrong, and I can't really justify that with my math, unfortunately. And I thought, I thought this was going to be the one, too, and it doesn't look like I'll be solving this one. On both the way up and down, the total force on the ball is this, so it doesn't change. Okay, so they're taking account of the velocity vector. Um, maximum height, we equate them. I did find the maximum height. Uh, yeah, I think I got a very similar equation to this. Oh, so that's how they got rid of the drag coefficient. They let alpha equal zero. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, that's a different way of looking at it. I didn't really think about it like that. This is shorter than the time in vacuum. Wow. So, I guess the drag force is a little shorter. Yeah, I, I got this wrong. I mean, uh, one day I'll probably get one right. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Sorry for wasting your time again.